As you see today, St Albans is a vibrant and thriving community lying just to the north of London in the United Kingdom. 17 centuries ago, Britain's first Christian martyr, St Alban, was executed on the hill where St Albans Cathedral now stands. That event determined the city's future as a place of pilgrimage for people from all over the world. I'm honoured to welcome the nomination of St Albans as part of the Green Pilgrim Network. This is the story of Alban as told by the 8th century English historian and monk, the Venerable Bede, who received it from historians before him. When rulers were issuing violent edicts against the Christians, Alban, as yet a pagan, gave hospitality to a Christian priest who was fleeing from his persecutors. When Alban saw this man praying day and night, divine grace suddenly shone upon him and he learned to imitate his guest's faith and devotion. Instructed little by little by his teaching about salvation, Alban became a wholehearted Christian. When this priest had been staying with him for some days, it came to the ears of the evil ruler that a man who confessed Christ was hiding in Alban's house. He at once ordered his soldiers to make a thorough search for him there. When they came to the martyr's dwelling, St. Alban at once offered himself to the soldiers in place of his guest and teacher. And so, having put on the cloak which the cleric was wearing, he was brought in bonds to the judge. Alban was then arrested. He was brought in before the judge. I demand to know your name, insisted the judge. Tell me at once. My name is Alban, he answered, and I worship and adore the true and living God who created all things. When the judge saw that no torture could break him or make him renounce the worship of Christ, he ordered his immediate beheading. Led out to execution, the saint came to a river which flowed swiftly between the wall of the town and the arena where he was to die. A crowd had collected in such numbers and so blocked the bridge that he could hardly have crossed. Later, as he reached the summit, Holy Alban asked God to give him water and at once a continuous spring bubbled up at his feet. Alban ascended the hill accompanied by the crowd. The hill was coloured and clothed with many different kinds of flowers, its beauty providing a worthy place to be hallowed by a martyr's blood. Here, on top of the hill, the gallant martyr met his death and received the crown of life which God has promised to all who love him. One soldier was moved by divine intuition not to kill Alban, and as the other soldier delivered the fatal blow, his eyes dropped out to the ground. St. Alban was killed on the 22nd day of June near the city of Erulamium. Alban was martyred probably around the year 300, just outside the Roman city of Verulamium. He was buried, and from that time onwards, Christians came to this spot to venerate the martyr saint. Around this grew a community of Benedictine monks and originally nuns. Since then, a strong tradition of pilgrimage has developed and still continues today, including the annual celebration of St. Alban's Feast in June. As Britain's first Christian martyr, the place where Alban was buried became a place of worship and pilgrimage. It is Britain's oldest surviving place of continuous Christian worship. Christians, of course, Alban isn't just an historical figure. Through the communion of saints, we believe that Alban is with us still, praying for us and helping us on our Christian pilgrimage. As St. Albans grew in significance as a prominent destination for pilgrims, the town of St. Albans grew up around it as a place of hospitality. In various forms, the community of St. Albans has kept alive the story of Alban and celebrated his faith. Pilgrim churches were also built on the outskirts of the town, which are now flourishing parish churches. The Saxon church building was replaced by a large Norman abbey in 1077. The remains of the Norman abbey are still visible in the Great Tower and the parts of the cathedral nave you see here on the left-hand side. The Normans used recycled Roman bricks from the Roman town of Verulamium that Alban came from. So it's perhaps Britain's oldest recycled building. 
The building itself has preserved examples of almost every different kind of architecture, from the Romans through the Saxons and the Normans, right down to the Victorians in the present day. In fact, it's been described as a schoolroom for architects. In the 16th century, the religious life of Western Europe was torn apart by the Reformation. Here in St. Albans, the abbey was closed on the orders of King Henry VIII, and the building suffered much damage and neglect. The townspeople of St. Albans, however, purchased the abbey from the king, and it became their parish church. In 1877, the abbey became a cathedral, the seat of the Bishop of St. Albans, and here it is and the Mother Church of the Diocese of St. Albans, which covers about a thousand square miles, mainly Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire. Today, the cathedral probably has the largest regular congregation of all English cathedrals. It receives about 160,000 visitors a year and 16,000 school children, and it's supported by about a thousand active volunteers. It's our vision to make St. Alban and his story better known, to celebrate his faith and courage, to preserve what's been entrusted to us and to enhance it for those who are still to come. The city and district of St Albans, as it's more properly known, is a remarkable place with great civic pride, a strong sense of identity and shared values and a long and distinguished history. Undoubtedly, the city has a rich heritage to draw on, but with that, there's a strong sense of the modern conditions and constraints under which we live. We have two major world-class centres of excellence specialising in environmental issues located here. The Building Research Establishment and Rothamsted Research Centre, the largest agricultural research centre in the United Kingdom. So it's not surprising that St Albans is at the forefront of national thinking on the contemporary themes incorporating community cohesion green technology and environmental sustainability. The St Albans District Vision sets out how the city and district's distinctiveness and rich heritage is to be protected and its strong architectural heritage developed over the next 20 years. Our Roman heritage, easily discoverable just a few minutes walk behind me, and our uniquely important cathedral just in front of me provide a strong sense of our history and we're fortunate to have a number of attractions that draw people from near and far. These include Butterfly World, the spectacular Gardens of the Rose, and Hartwood Forest, where over 600,000 new trees will be planted to create in the next 10 years the largest new forest, not in the UK, but in Europe. It's very exciting for us to be included in the launch of the Green Pilgrim Network and it comes at a very significant time for St Albans Cathedral and also for St Albans City as the council here is debating the future of the town for the next decades to come. And the cathedral too is now planning a huge step change in the quality and the scope of the welcome that we offer to visitors and pilgrims and in our learning facilities here in particular. And by doing this we are aiming to raise the profile of the place and to make it far better known, both the city and St Albans Saint, uh, to people at large. Part of that step change will be making new buildings for the education centre and for visitors and in 2012, we are planning to commission a public architecture competition to design those facilities to the best environmental standards. And that will also be an opportunity for us to improve our landscaping here and our conservation programme. In 2009, we hosted an ecumenical conference here in St Albans for young people from our Link Cathedral of Linköping in Sweden and the Archdiocese of Loreto in Italy. Together, they discussed how their faith impacted on issues of the environment. Our local Abbey Primary School has its own green council with a vegetable plot and a greenhouse constructed with recycled plastic bottles. 
Through our school's program, we will help children of all ages to relate their faith to the whole of creation. And through courses and days run by our adult Center for Christian Studies, we will explore the link between Christian theology and environmental care. We will encourage all visitors here to think about their journey and about the need to tread lightly and to care for God's creation. Our congregational committee, the Abbey Assembly, has voted to encourage worshipers to support a green fund. Each year, pilgrim groups walk to their cathedral from across the diocese for an Easter celebration. We will use this experience to build up a network of Alban pilgrim routes to encourage pilgrims on foot throughout the year. In our cafe, we are planning a new range of local food, which will be prepared to order. And all of this will be done in partnership with our local council and their city vision, with other churches and faith groups, and with local businesses as the Green Pilgrim Network becomes better known. When our patron, St. Alban, was arrested and commanded to offer sacrifice to pagan gods, he refused and he replied with the words, My name is Alban and I worship and adore the true and living God who created all things. And that belief in God and in the goodness of God's creation is really at the heart of our vision to be part of the Green Pilgrim Network.